President. Likewise for me. Great honor for me as well. What do you hear of the speech? Off your brain. Okay. I'm quite convinced that we have the opportunity to deliver our speech. are in gymnasium, high school? Man, we got a lot of those. And how many teachers? <coughs> Martin? <laughs> He's a professor. Einstein teacher and professor. And he just turned 19 today. <laughs> okay, staying with the serious question. How many support Hertha? Oh, come on. <laughs> Union. Andon. Others. What do you support? What's your name, ma'am? I'm sorry? Sarah. And who do you support? Uh, Freiburg. Freiburg. Sehr interessant. <laughs> and who else said Andor? Sir? All right. Who else back here? Werder Bremen. I'm going to be in Bremen tomorrow night with Herr Metzaka. And how many of you grew up in either West Berlin or in West Germany? And how many of you, if I may ask, grew up in former East Berlin or the former East Germany? Is that about even? A number of you didn't raise your hands, which concerns me. <laughs> I hope we didn't have to pay you to come here today. That's very, very helpful for me as, uh, as I frame some of my remarks, and I appreciate your... Those won't be the last questions I have for you. Thank you so much again for coming out today. It's a little warm in here, so uh, I recognize that, uh, and I appreciate your bearing with me. I wanted to talk about three different themes today, and I'll do it as quickly as I can, and in fact, I brought some pictures along to help me. I want to talk about history. I want to talk about today, or heute, three, three H's, und heroes. History, heute, heroes. My comments around history are going to be more recent history over the past 60 odd years. But a colleague of mine, George Ruffner, today uh, reminded me that I am the successor to anyone here know the first ambassador of the United States to Germany? A representative, in fact. John Quincy Adams, who ultimately became president of the United States, one of only two father and son president in the family, George Bush and George Bush are the other, other others. As the, as the story has it, John Quincy Adams appeared at the Brandenburg Gate, and he said, I am here to represent the United States. The answer back from the person greeting him, what's that? <laughs> I hope you don't say that about me in a, couple, in, in a few minutes. Let's focus on more recent history, if I may, and allow me to use some pictures. And before I begin, let me just say that the relationship between Germany and America over the past 60 plus years is the most important relationship of our country over that period of time. The German-American relationship is our country's most important relationship over the past 60 plus years, unambiguously, if I may. I have, I have some bonus questions for you. Does anyone know who the man in the middle is? Anybody, any takers? Teachers, members of the press, family members. Bonus, George C. Marshall. Do you happen to know where this is? Humboldt University, it's not Humboldt University. It's at my alma mater, Harvard University, Thursday, June 5th, 1947. Does anyone know the significance of that day? He announced that day, what would you guess? 
the European aid program, which was ultimately has become known as the Marshall Plan. The most significant diplomatic initiative in the history of mankind. Don't forget that. And one of the biggest beneficiaries right here in Germany. It's the beginning of a period that lasts over 40 plus years between our two countries, where there is enormous amount of intimacy, enormous amount of direct specific knowledge of each other. Between that day and 47, in fact, it started almost immediately after the Second War, right up through the wall coming down in 1989, Germany was front and center on the minds of most, if not all, Americans. And likewise, America was front and center on the minds of most, if not all, Germans, West or East. Certainly, the tangible experience was substantially greater in the West. What, what I mean by that is that history between our two countries is extraordinarily rich. As I said, over the past 60 odd years, it's the richest, it's the deepest, it's the most important that our country shares with any other country. But it's not enough. We have to build on that. It is necessary, but not sufficient for us to create the magic of today's relationship between Germany and America. It is somewhat like the president's popularity. Uh, we need his popularity to make progress. It is a gift to us. It is necessary, absolutely, but not sufficient for us to make that progress. So what I'd like to do is switch from history and go to Hoyta and talk about a couple of the issues that are before us today. This is a picture I love. Can you all see it? This is an American female soldier where would you guess this is? Where are you? Where do you think this is? Close, Afghanistan. This is an American female soldier. By the way, it could be just as easily a German uh, soldier. Germany is right beside us in a lot of initiatives, both combat and non-combat in, in Afghanistan. But our strategic objective, as noble as this is, and by the way, as important as this is, in helping us achieve our objectives, and I want to come back to that, our strategic objective in Afghanistan is to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat Al-Qaeda and its extremist allies. That has not changed, nor will it. We talk about changing tactics a lot. That's what we should be doing. But that strategic imperative has not changed. We were attacked. Innocent people were killed, including Germans. That's the strategic objective. Germany is helping us mightily, both militarily and civilian efforts in that effort. 